Good morning and a very warm welcome. As always, I hope you are well. Going to be talking to you today about traveling, traveling and sleep, how traveling can affect our little one's sleep and more importantly, what we can do to try and minimize it. It's a really, really common question that I have from people um, who are either on holiday saying, me, Amanda, it's all going wrong, it's happening. Um, but there are things we can do in the lead up to going away um, and things we can certainly do whilst we are away. So the first thing that we are going to bear in mind is our expectations of travelling with a little one and their sleep. Long gone are the days, certainly for myself, where um, I'm now lounging on a beach, sipping a cocktail with a little one. Travel and holidays are just generally different. OK, so on the lead up to holiday, it's not what we what we're used to, what it what it used to look like pre kids. I know pre kids is a long can feel like a long time ago and it's hard to remember. Um, so just kind of having our expectations. Um, also, when we think about if we're going on a plane, how that might be a long car journey, like sometimes it can be frustrating and tiring for us. So just imagine what it's like for our little ones as well. So just a bit of prep work with our kind of mindset before we even go on holiday. Sometimes when you prepare for the worst, anything other than that is always a really nice little surprise. So just try and have um, a positive but realistic kind of um insight and kind of forethought about it yes it might be a bit tough but actually it's going to be fine um so what the most common mistake families make um with traveling with little ones and their sleep is that we over schedule yes we're going away and we want to try and pack in as much as we can but over scheduling especially if our babies are very small over simulation occurs so much more quicker than if we've got a toddler or indeed an old child. So just try and be mindful of what your week might look like if you're away for the weekend, if you're away for a week or more. Just be a little bit mindful about what schedule you have, what you've got planned. You know, if you've got like a really kind of busy morning, try and have a bit of a chilled afternoon. Or if you've got like a really busy day of either going to meet family and friends or going out for the day, maybe the day after, try and have a bit of a chilled one. So just be mindful of kind of your schedule and what that looks like for your little ones, which leads me on nicely to overtiredness. Overstimulation leads to overtiredness. Okay. And yes, we're on holiday and we want to maybe have a later night and go out for dinner. That is absolutely fine. A slightly later bedtime or missing a nap once or twice isn't going to be the end of the world. Okay. But when we're doing it either over a week or two weeks, they are going to build up. OK, and that is going to make your little one really, really unsettled at night time. So just again, just be mindful of what time your little one's going to bed compared to what time they usually went to bed at home. Let's talk about different time zones, because this can be a massive thing. We know as adults, jet lag is not fun. And it is it, it's hard. It's hard for us as an adult. So, of course, for our little ones, it's going to be difficult. I would say if you are traveling to a different time zone and you can try and keep on the same schedule that you're on at home, that would be ideal. So if um, the country you're going to is kind of either two, three, four hours ahead, that's fine. Um, but we don't want it much the other way because then we're looking at kind of really early mornings. We don't particularly want that. So have a look at where you're going compared to the time zone in which you are coming from. When you arrive, try and get on the schedule as quickly as you can. So if there, there's no chance of you kind of just slotting into um, the, the normal timings that you're normally on, just try and get on the new time zone as quickly as you can. If when you arrive, your little one kind of needs a bit of an extra nap because it might have been a really long flight, 45 minute nap is going to really, really help. 
just make sure it's not too close to bedtime. Um, daylight. Daylight is then your best friend throughout your holiday um, because our circadian rhythm, which is our internal body clock, is all set by um, daylight. So the quicker we can get our little ones out into the daylight to be like, right, this is our new time zone. This is daylight now. That's really, really going to help our little ones adjust to the night to the new time period that they are on. Things we can take with us to help. What we want to do is try and recreate our usual kind of bedtime um, bed environment that your little one is used to sleeping in. So a really, really easy and brilliant one to do is take sheets with you. So if your little one is in a crib or a cot or even a toddler bed, let them sleep in their sheets for about four to five days a week. Don't take clean sheets with you. I know it's counterintuitive. Take those sheets with you, okay? Put them in a plastic bag, and then when you get there, put them on your little one's bed or cot or wherever it is that they're sleeping. It's gonna smell familiar to them, and it's gonna smell like home. So it's gonna be an extra comfort, and it's gonna be a bit of a signal to them, like, oh, okay, yes, I recognize this smell. This smell means sleep time. If they've got a favorite cuddly toy or something that they sleep with, absolutely take that with you as well. Just as we want them exposed to daylight during the day to help set their body clock, we kind of want the opposite at night time. So we want to try and make it as dark as we can if they are used to having that darkness at home, especially. So blackout blinds, of course, your hotel is probably not going to have them. Or if we're going to say in an Airbnb or a lodge or anything like that, the chances are they're probably not going to have them. They're probably going to have the really super thin curtains that are just like a sheet. Um, so you can buy travel blackout blinds and you can get them super, super cheap. And they've just got um, suckers on them. So you can just sucker them, put, pop them onto the window and then take them down. Really, really easy. Fold up really, really small, really, really light. Brilliant for traveling. Um, so try and make the room environment as dark as you can. Try and replicate what their environment looks like back at home. Likewise, if they are used to having a little nightlight as well, try and take something travel wise that you can plug in or lots of places have like little lamps that you can just kind of move around and place in their bedroom if they're not fond of the dark or if you want them to have a little light. So you've got your smelly sheets, which are brilliant. You've got their um, kind of comforter or teddy bear that they're used to sleeping with. You're trying to get the room as dark as you can so they know it's time for sleep. You don't want to overschedule them. You don't want them overtired. Try and get them on either the new time zone as quick as you can or stick to your own time zone. I had um, a family recently that traveled to Romania from the UK. Romania is two hours ahead. And actually, that worked out really well for them. So that meant they were on a seven till seven schedule. Um, so they just went to a nine till nine schedule, which was perfect because it meant that they were able to go out for dinner of an evening time. Um, their naps were at 11 and I believe at four. So it worked out really, really well. If you're worried about daytime sleep with your little mom when it comes to traveling, I know it can be a big thing. Some pram naps are not going to do them any harm. OK, so or if your summer really, really hot, this is the perfect excuse to say, I'll take the baby for their nap pop back into the nice air con. Um, and if you want to have a little nap as well. I'm not here to judge. Um, so be mindful of where the nap is going to take place. Some, I mean, the weather at the moment is crazy all over the world. So just be mindful if they're out in that heat and you want them to have a sleep, try and get them somewhere cool so they can have a sleep in their um, sleep environment would be ideal. Um, but likewise, if you're on the go and you want, just want them to have their, their nap in the pram, that is going to be okay as well. If you're driving somewhere long, try and time it at their nap time so they can have a really good sleep in the car. That will um, be really beneficial to you all as well. Now, when we think about where they are sleeping on holiday, and this is where a lot of families struggle. If you are able to have um, some, kind, some kind of separate partition, another room would be ideal, but that can be pricey. I absolutely get that. Having just 
your little ones have their own sleep sites, especially if they're used to sleep in their own bedroom at home. OK, so obviously, if you've got a, a young baby and you want to keep them with them, no problem at all. But if they're a little bit older and they're used to having their own kind of quiet room and space, try and replicate that as much as you can. I have had families use the bathroom in the hotel room because it's really big and it fits a travel cot and it's really nice and cool and it's quiet and it's dark. Yes, they're sleeping in a bathroom, but that's OK. They're sleeping in their cot. They're not on the bath. They're not in the bath. They're not on the bathroom tiles. They are safe in their travel cot. OK, um, just try and make some kind of partition, because what you don't want is for your little one to wake up in the middle of the night, see their two favourite people and think it's playtime and not go back to sleep because that is not good for anybody. You don't want to be miserable and tired on your holiday. So even if you've got a bit of furniture, say, say you've got like a big room um, and just make some kind of partition. Some places have like really tall kind of chest of drawers. You just put that in between the cot and your bed just so they can't physically see you in the middle of the night makes the world of difference. OK, so assess where you're going. Have a little look around. See what you can do. Get get creative with it you know like a clothes horse with just a sheet over it again not close enough to your little one's cot so they can pull the sheet onto them far enough away that they can't touch it but that's another partition it's just like a physical barrier that lets them know this is my sleep space and this is my safe space where I'm going to go to sleep and I can't see my two favorite people in the world and think it's playtime in the middle of the night um and lastly, I like I know we spoke about expectations at the very beginning, but really and truly just think to yourself on traveling with a child or with multiple children. OK, cut yourself some slack. It is hard. It absolutely is. I remember before I had my little boy being at the airport on an, on an airplane and um, young ones being really noisy, babies crying. I used to think to myself aren't these parents in control can't they just keep their babies quiet and then you have a child and you're like oh I get it I get it number one children are not made to be quiet that is not their job in life number two if they're on an airplane that's really scary for them just the thought of how it affects their eardrums um so try to take as many as their kind of favorite toys and familiar things maybe on the plane ride with you as well um so it's to keep them a little bit entertained um but my biggest tip is just to go with it you're going on holiday, the last thing you want to do is be stressed. Try and implement these things that I've explained to you. But actually, if all goes to pot, just know when you get back, get into your new routine, your back to your old routine and just get back things back on track. It can be done. Please don't think, oh, my gosh, we're on holiday. It's all going wrong. This is our forever. It isn't. You can try and replicate your routine that you had at home. So that's like a really good thing for your um, little one's queuing system for the mind and body to go. OK, yep, sleep's coming next, um, which is why when I work with families, I give them a really easy to follow um, routine that can be replicated anywhere you go. Um, so stick to kind of your little, little, little routine as you would do leading up to bedtime as well. But you're on, on holiday and you're trying to enjoy it. Don't stress about sleep too much. I know it's easier said than done. I know you've probably spent the best part of a week making this, packing, taking the kitchen sink, especially if you've got a baby and um, you're taking bottles and loads of nappies and everything with you. I get it. Just as much as you can, try and relax. Manage your expectations. Yes, it's going to be a whirlwind. Yes, it's going to be a struggle, but actually it's going to be OK and try and enjoy it as much as you can. What happens on holiday stays on holiday. Um, so that is your travel tips. If you have any questions, always please feel free to reach out and um, ask me and I will see you all soon.